Hello, friends. I had a Q&A conversation yesterday with the JRF membership, and I wanted to give you guys a little sampler of the first approximately 15 minutes. We covered a lot. It was very enlightening, very informative, and also just very lighthearted conversation as well. So it was a really pleasant, um, just under two hours that I think you'd really like. If you haven't considered the JRF membership, um, I, I definitely do. It is a wonderful resource, especially right now with everything going on. And for some of us, it, it may feel harder for you to feel your transcendental layers within yourself, given the amount of chaos and psyops <laughs> with psychological operations, uh, which we do talk about in this Q&A. Um, you can also access the JRF exclusive content on Roku and on our Amazon Fire channel. Just search for Jill Renee Feeler and you'll find our channel under that. Okay, it is premium content, it is, it is exclusive, and here's a sampler for you. I hope you like it, and I would love and be honored for you to become a member and receive this regular exclusive content, including weekly clearing and connection exercises that are less than 20 minutes long and really are helping you be your best when we need it most. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Jill, and welcome to this Q&A conversation. I am excited to meet with you today. And let's start with our connection experience first, okay? I encourage you to close your eyes and put a smile on your face. And let's take some nice deep breaths in through the nose and also out through the nose, ideally for the count of four or more each way. Um, and I'll help with the counting um, using a count of four. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four and exhaling, one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna join you guys on this next one. And again. Okay, while you guys are still breathing, let's let's give you a little zhuzh <laughs> while you're doing that. Okay, I would like you to imagine that there is a ball, a sphere right behind your throat, and it's got all these beautiful rainbow colors. Okay, so it's like a rainbow ball instead of a rainbow like bridge or a rainbow arc, and it's a source energy within you. It is tuned and available literally just for you. Okay, beautiful. And as you inhale on your next inhale, imagine that that ball gets bigger and that it drops all the way down your spine, all the way down to your root chakra. And then it just slides all the way back up. So this, this rainbow ball, is inside of you, basically descending and ascending, descending and ascending, going up and down your spine, helping literally attune you to lightness. Um, I want to say playfulness, lightheartedness, um, resilience, beauty, inner beauty, beautiful thoughts, beautiful ideas, beautiful creations and the beautiful you inside and out. Okay, again, nice deep breath. Okay, great start. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll just stay right there. And let me, let's see here, close that. Okay, let's get started. So I have some questions from you guys. Um, and one of them came in via email. Okay, very good. Um, and I did answer it via, via email too, so I'll just read what I wrote back to her. But but she's she's been connected to my work for a while, and I it's one of those many things that I'm like, I thought we talked about that. But you know what? Just because I said something doesn't mean I said it well. <laughs> and it doesn't mean it, it, it kind of... Uh, send uh, settled the answer didn't settle so um, let's take this question from her okay so I'll call her M <laughs> okay she said at our infinite self, self oh excuse me she said um, you've mentioned that we chose to be here but you've also mentioned that we've been manipulated to reincarnate 
So that to me feels like not quite like choosing to be here. I look forward to your elaboration. Thanks. And what I wrote back to them is at our infinite self level, everyone here chose to enter this realm. Okay, so all life in this realm made a conscious choice at the infinite self level to enter the realm. Okay, and that's the biggest distinction about where the choosing is happening at a at a knowing, non manipulated, uh, knowing the variables in here, knowing that there would be um, a sensation of feeling maybe stuck here or trapped here, which not everyone feels that way, by the way, but some do. Okay, and I do feel in some ways like that, if that is how someone feels that they feel trapped or stuck here, I feel like that can be um, reframed so that they don't feel that way anymore. Um, But it requires that individual to loosen up some sometimes bitterness and anger about the way this reality functions. Okay. All right. Um, And then the other thing I wrote is that, okay, so let me let me read the whole thing, because it's just like three sentences. At our infinite self level, everyone here chose to enter this realm. Upon death, in the process of disconnecting to one's body and the confusion that can continue within the realm in the afterlife, beings are regularly offered a process of reincarnation. Okay, so let's break that down because this is so important. Um, It's so important that we understand that all life here at its infinite self level, right, that it it knew the kind of the lay of the land, it didn't know everything that would happen here, because this is a very highly unpredictable um, environment here, okay, within the realm. And then so the the manipulation part happens within the realm. So once somebody dies, and there's just like there's confusion within their lifetime, there's also confusion in the afterlife, just like there's manipulation that can happen within someone's life, there's manipulation that can and does happen in the afterlife. It doesn't always happen. Manipulation can be recognized and therefore you can avoid being manipulated in this life and in the afterlife. So the approach that I'm taking as my team and as my Jill with my work is to help inform um, as many people as possible, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not restricting, right? There's a lot of free stuff I do too. Um, there's a lot of the ability to inform us while we're alive affects our consciousness, not our brain, our consciousness. And by informing our consciousness within the realm, the consciousness is also informed in the afterlife. And that way in the afterlife, my intention and goal is to reduce the level of successful manipulation, right? Because the manipulation will continue just like it does here. But once the consciousness has been informed and sort of acclimated to, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I need to worry. (laughs) or I need to not worry. I need to be aware and very cautious and very on my game and in charge of myself in terms of what I say yes to and what I say no to because manipulators manipulate, right? Just like they do in this reality and just like they do in the afterlife. Um, So I, sorry, I keep bumping my mic for this recording and I think it's gonna be really annoying. So I'm gonna move it because I'm very animated. (laughs) Um, I understand that people are very bothered and a lot of the questions even for today are about the afterlife and reincarnation and I I totally get it. And it's funny because it's not my favorite thing to talk about. (laughs) I keep wanting to get to other things that I find more interesting. Um, But I, I do want to be as clear as possible about what, what I know, so that you can view me as an advisor that you either agree with or disagree with. Okay. But what I offer is I think, especially when it comes to reincarnation, it's contradictory to a lot of the end, a lot of the other information that some of you um, no, or even contradictory to some of the information that some of you teach. So I understand that uh, for some of you that are not maybe willing to look at it, that I'm saying something that's the antithesis of some of the other truths that you hold, that you're going to want to keep coming at it if you're going to want to hold those truths both true. And I mean, it's a sunny day outside. If I were trying to tell myself it's raining outside, I'm going to keep going outside saying, yep, it, so you're saying it's sunny and, and 
yeah, I'm saying it's sunny <laughs> because there's some inner structure of, but it's raining, right? No, it's not raining. It's still not raining. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so when we try to hold two antithetical ideas, we may decide that one of them is right and one of them is wrong. I, th I think it's very disconcerting and it causes a lot of dis-ease when we try to hold two antithetical truths as both true. I don't, I don't think that's going to work. Um, so one thing you could try out is to just pick one and just kind of ride that horse for a while <laughs> and just see how it feels. How, and to me, the, the measure of, of which one you choose is which one helps you feel closer and more personally connected to the inner light that you are. That to me is the best uh, like measurement uh, tool to use about whether a truth is like useful, valuable, etc. Um, now there are some truths within the realm that either are true or are not. Um, but for the truths that no one can prove, um, and it's just beyond, you know, scientific method <laughs> that somebody is going to be right and somebody is going to be wrong. I really, uh, really recommend that for the, pro the truths that cannot be proven, such as the afterlife and what happens there and this reality and what this reality is, what is this world? What is it for? Um, that those things cannot be proven. So we're all in this sort of sea of, of unprovability. And what do you do with that? I, because you can't prove whether it's right or it's wrong, um, but there probably is a right or a wrong, I, I personally use the, the, what do I feel best in? Which of these truths allows me to feel um, as, as loving, as likable, as empowered, as a source energy that I believe is real, but I can't prove that it's real. What allows me and everyone here to be our best selves? I like that as a, as a sort of like, yeah, that, that sounds good. <laughs> that, that works. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, just giving you the maybe inside scoop there about, um, possibly how I do it. And hopefully that's helpful to you. Okay. All right, so that was the first question. And let me know for those of you that are live if that um, answers that question or not. And while we're on the theme of reincarnation, let's go to, I think Melissa had one related to the afterlife and reincarnation as well. Okay. Okay. Hello, Melissa. She's saying, hi, Jill. When we choose to reincarnate in a human like experience, do we usually choose Earth? Um, I'm just going to read the whole question and then I'll go back and answer it. Okay. Are we restricted to Earth? Does reincarnating from recycled bin versus source matter um, impact the decision and our choices? Have any of us incarnated elsewhere? Can you tell us about any of those places or experiences? I assume they are not in our universe or dimension, but what do I know? I think the COVID um, political yuck and weather destruction like the California fires again right now make me wonder if there is a safer, less dramatic and more peaceful experience possibility for next time. It would be nice to dream about a, a new somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah, I feel Judy Garland laughing <laughs> as, we, as we reference this, her infamous song there. Um, okay, so let's, let's kind of take this in chunks here. When we choose to incarnate in a human-like experience, do we usually choose Earth? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different... I mean, when you say we, I assume you're talking about our infinite self layers, our sort of creator of origin, source energy layers. Um, do we usually choose Earth? Um, well, obviously, those of us in this conversation here within the realm have all chosen Earth at some point, which is why we're here, right? Um, so that's a that's a big number. <laughs> if you look at how many life forms, especially when you include plant, you know, mineral, um, 
all the animals. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of life going on here within within this realm. And then there's the metaphysical dimensions of it too, which don't have a 3D physical form. Um, or it can. To become a member, just go to jillreneefeeler.com. Go over to members, exclusive member experiences. You'll see a little invitation video right here. You'll see the upcoming events listed. You'll see the recorded events. And this is the event that I was talking about in this video, the Q&A. And then we also have exclusive articles. This one includes a U.S. presidential election prediction as well. So, all right. We're also on Roku, as we said, and Amazon Fire. Alrighty. Love you guys. Bye-bye.